everyone. Welcome to the last session of the day. Woo, Woo! yeah. <laughs> Sweet. Yeah, give yourselves a round of applause for staying awake and being down to listen to our last but certainly not least talk of the day, which is being hosted by Alex Meng, who's going to be talking about .NET Aspire and Dapper and how the two can come together to create a great cloud, uh, cloud application coding experience. So take it away. Thanks a lot. How many of you attended my session yesterday on Dapper? Raise of hands. Thanks for being here again. So the plan is actually quite simple. Um, I do have a very limited number of slides because I'm not a fan of slides. First and foremost, welcome at Build. Um, for those of you who don't know me yet, my name is Alex Mang. I'm what Microsoft calls the original director and the most valuable professional. Don't be fooled, I do not work for Microsoft. Feel free to bash the products even here at the conference because it's a constructive feedback. Uh, that being said, before I show you the QR, I told you, I don't have many slides. Everything is going to happen today in VS Code and in the terminal. Um, you know, when we develop a lot of code, we also write a lot of boilerplate. I think it's time to fix that. And the entire talk is going to be about just that, fixing the boilerplate code that we normally have to write. In one coffee break, because that's what I think of 15 minutes, back at home, 15 minutes is a coffee break, I will show you how we scaffold, we run, and we even ship microservices. So we're effectively going to use .NET Aspire and Dapper to do that. The promise is that Aspire scaffolds, Dapper powers, and Azure runs. And this is the promise of the talk. So I'm going to start off with a few lines of code. And because I've learned my lesson from yesterday when I fat fingered my commands a lot, I do have them prepared. So I'm going to copy paste a lot for this one. Uh, and hopefully, I will know how to properly copy paste from a clipboard. The first thing I'll do is I'm going to start off with the Aspire Starter project. And I'm going to create the super app folder for my super app that's about to come up. As you might expect, typical .NET situation, everything has been created in my machine. If I were to go ahead and see whatever, whatever we have inside this folder, super app, you'll see there are a bunch of folders right there. Specifically, we have um, four different folders and a file, a solution file. Even though I'm in the CLI, we now get solution files with .NET. I'm super excited for that. Uh, maybe you're not, but you should be. Then we have the API service. We have a web application, a service defaults, and an application host. This is typical Aspire uh, uh, mantra, where inside the application host, you have a, effectively a definition of all the other projects, the microservices that you're about to run. Now, the whole idea with this project is that I am just about to include Dapper inside my project. In order to make Dapper run, I need to install a NuGet package. And I promise you that's everything I need to do special for Dapper. Other than that, I'm not going to write any boilerplate code. And this is the only boilerplate CLI command that I would normally have to run to get Dapper running inside uh, Aspire. So along the lines of .NET add, and then specifying the project, namely my super app, app host project, and then specifying the package name, which in this case would be community toolkit Aspire hosting Dapper, there's nothing else I need to do. And that's about it. I installed the NuGet package, and now I should be able to simply build the application. Going ahead and building the application, obviously, is super simple. If you simply say .NET build, it builds the application, takes a few seconds, and now we're up and running. Let's open up Visual Studio Code so we can actually take a proper look at the, this application. I'm going to zoom in so that everybody has a good um, view of the application and the solution itself. I have my C Sharp extension installed in VS Code, my favorite one. And over here, I can see my application, um, the microservice called API service, the web application itself, my application host, and the service defaults, which contains a bunch of extensions, which make it super simple for tracing, monitoring, telemetry gathering, and so forth. Things that you normally want to have in any enterprise production application, specifically when you're running microservices. Now, without any further ado, if I were to take a look inside the application host file right here, you will see that we have a very simple file that's just effectively doing a health check and adding the project, and that's about it. But I want to elaborate this a bit. And what I'm about to do, again, I have a lot of things copied over in my clipboard because of the limited time I have available, but I do have all of this shared in my GitHub repo, so feel free to copy them after the session. Over here, you will see that I have chosen to add two different Dapper components. We talked about Dapper components in other sessions. There's a Diagrid Dapper booth as well. I highly encourage you to head and check it out. Head over there. So what I'm doing here is that I've configured two components, one for state, 
for effectively storing data, and the other one for PubSub for sending and receiving uh, asynchronous messages, uh, which are both based on Redis because I'm running everything locally on my machine. Now, in app host, we only added two Redis specific lines, one for state store, the other one for pops up. Then we hang up the Depper sidecar for these projects by specifying with Depper sidecar two times. And then we're specifying the references for the state store for each of these two projects. By doing that, not only do I have microservices, but I have Depperized my application. So Aspire works along to run, uh, alongside with Dapper, and all the goodies of Dapper are now enabled inside my application. That's literally everything I had to do. And in my opinion, it's something super simple. You probably received the red squiggles, so let's actually fix that before we can actually run the application. I'm going to head back to my terminal. Where's my terminal? Here we are. And I'm going to add a few NuGet packages necessary for this application to run correctly, namely the Community Toolkit app, um, Aspire hosting Dapper NuGet package, the Dapper client, and the Dapper ASP.NET Core, which do make these red squiggles go away as soon as I will build the application. Now, if I were to run this application, I'm simply going to hit F5. This is a brand new application, so they're probably going to ask me for some things such as which debugger do you want to use? Obviously, it's a C-sharp application. What application do you want to start with? So being a microservices .dent Aspire application, you want to start off with your application host. I'm going to go with the default configuration for that. Everything is nicely being built. We see some interesting hieroglyphs there. And any moment now, I should see the Aspire dashboard, which is a fantastic application with a fluent UI design, which right now cannot be reached. Give it a second. It's going to be there. There we go. And just like that, believe it or not, we have all the graph lights coming up. Everything is nicely green. So boom, pretty much instant architecture, if you ask me. Because in one keystroke, more or less, we turned a blank code into a living systems map. And over here, in this graph, I can actually see my application running with the side cards along, with all those errors which show me how the application is communicating with the, those microservices. So every service, every sidecar, every dependency automatically discovered and running before we can even sip the coffee I was telling you about previously. Now, let's be fair. For now, we have connected these services. And I, it feels almost like a marketing pitch where I'm saying that everything is so simple. Um, and that they're talking together. The reality is that they're not necessarily talking together yet because we didn't write any code for that. So let's change that. First off, I'm going to head over to my API. So let's close this guy for now. Let's uh, stop the debugger, heading back to the API application, open up, I'll open up program CS. There we go. There's another screen I don't need. Over here, we have the default. So effectively, um, Aspar gives us an, a weather forecast application. I'm going to change that with the canonical e-commerce application I always appreciate. So I'm going to create the microservice application based on the e-commerce mantra, where you have some sort of an order processor and the uh, checkout processor and so forth. I obviously get some errors here, and I'm going to explain that in a second. For now, let's just quickly fix these errors by installing some additional Git packages. It's a Microsoft product, so obviously they love NuGet, and so do I. Now, here's the deal. The moment I install that NuGet package, the rest squiggles will go away. And what I just did is I effectively installed again Dapper, now this time on this particular microservice. It's a microservice application, so everything is independently um, designed for one from the other. I don't install NuGet packages on one product, and that's it. I will have to those NuGet packages to get installed on every product, so every sidecar gets nicely injected and talks to all of the microservices I have in my application. What I'm doing here is that inside this program, I'm effectively processing orders as they come in. And see this line right here with topic? I appreciate this quite a lot. What this is doing is effectively decorating the REST call I would normally receive over a REST HTTP call with a post verb. Now, just with this one line, it becomes an entry point for a subscription for a topic. So rather than doing synchronous communication on top of the HTTP protocol, I can just send the message somewhere to a broker of messages, which can be Redis, Service Bus, Kafka, you name it. You just plug in YAML codes, and that's it. And literally, with no other lines of code changed, I now have asynchronous communication, just one single line of code. In my opinion, that's impressive, simplifies development quite a lot. Let's make some changes to the web application as well. So I'm going to head over to the program CS file inside my web app. Again, this is the default that comes with Aspire. Let's scratch that. And instead, I have a much better web application developed, which is doing similar things for the e-commerce application. As you can imagine, it's time to install some NuGet packages once more. 
So let's head over to our terminal, hit install, and we're done with those packages. Now, what's interesting is that if we take a look at the request for service to service invocation, let me zoom in just slightly bit here. You'll see that every time I get a request on the orders endpoint on the web application, on the front end, I want to effectively retrieve messages or data from the API. I can do this with a service invocation directly. The way I would normally do it if I wouldn't have Dapper is that I would reach out to that microservice. I would have to know its name. I would have to know its services, its IP address, host name, DNS, you name it. Here, I don't need to do that. Why is that? Because I'm telling Dapper, which runs as a sidecar to this application, to effectively invoke asynchronously another application over the get verb. So I'm telling Dapper to pretty much act as a butler, where I'm telling the butler, hey, can you receive this data for, retrieve this data for me and just fetch it? And I'm going to work with it afterwards, which effectively means I don't have to worry about DNS, mutual TLS uh, uh, handshakes and security, security of my uh, communication and so forth, because MTLS is automatically enabled, service discovery is enabled, and so is retries. Imagine that service not being available. It's Dapper, which handles the retries and the failures and so forth. I don't have to write a single line of transient error handling code whatsoever in my code. Everything is nicely boiled, uh, baked in. So again, no boilerplate code. You just focus on your business logic. This is our first request. So if I would were to run this application now, I'm going to hit Enter. I'll wait for the dashboard to come up. Now we see that all of the services are up and running. That's amazing. I can head back to my graph here. Pretty good, good, good stuff. I can head back to my terminal as well. And I could and normally should be able to simply say curl. Uh, I might have actually a different endpoint. So for the web front end, 7227 is the endpoint I'm going to work with. Live coding on stage, 7227. Empty reply from server. You, you, you imagine, you get the idea. Effectively, I should normally get my endpoint to respond with, a, um, with, a, with an order. Now, going further, you can tell that something messed up. Empty reply from server doesn't sound good. So now let's actually get some telemetry out of it and some observability. One of the greatest and most important things in microservices is observability. When you have a lot of different projects that run alongside, but independently, getting a log of something happening from one microservice, which chains up an error to another microservice, is actually something pretty difficult to, to achieve. But thanks to Aspire this time around, I can very easily enable tracing and even in use open telemetry. So what I'm about to do is that I'm going to head over to my API first and foremost, and I'm going to head over here and say that for my builder, I will want to enable logging. The way this works is that you simply say builder logging at simple console, which means that any console standard output error messages that I'm retrieving are going to be pushed over to my set of services, and I'm going to enable logging. Additionally, I also want to retrieve, say, information level as well. So the way you do that is that you say on the login configuration itself on the builder that you want to set the minimum level to be information. And then if you want to enable open telemetry, it's actually super easy to do. Just need to write a few lines of code around the lines of open add open telemetry, and then you specify if you, want to, uh, if you want to have tracing enabled and so forth. This requires an additional directive, a namespace to be specified, namely the instrumentation namespace. I'm going to do the same for the web application. So let me go ahead here, and I'm going to add these lines all of a sudden from a single shot. Oh, there we go. Boom. Adding the missing directive, and there we go. Now, I'm not going to run the application and show you all the consoles, but you can imagine now I get effectively not only the console messaging, but I also get tracing, which means that the moment I'm hitting the web application, I'm going to see how much of that request from the web application was actually consumed in within the API. And I get all of this goodness of monitoring and telemetry without using application insights, new relic, or any, or any other product. I'm getting it pretty much out of the box in Aspire. If you want to have more, or if you want to use these third-party tools, fantastic. They can be plugged into your Aspire and Dapper implementation as well. So what's pretty cool about this is that you can actually extend the capabilities of your application. Imagine you want to use Helm C. Everything you need to do, 
along the, along the same mantra of builder services add something, I could simply say builder services and then say add health check, as you saw previously in uh, the scaffolded application. I can similarly do an add endpoints API Explorer and I can do so many more things. I can even make health checks with my own endpoints where I'm validating that my dependencies such as Redis are available. And if Redis fails, then my API is not available and therefore the sidecar shouldn't communicate and I shouldn't get any requests or anything as such. This is all good stuff if you ask me and it's super easy to work with and it highly enables you to write microservices without actually focusing on the boilerplate code. Now, there's one piece missing, namely how do we empower Azure? So what's very, very interesting about this is that the moment you want to publish, you head back over here, you open up your AZ developer CLI, AZD, and you simply say AZD in it. Normally, before you, sorry, AZD up. Before you do AZD up, you need to authenticate because obviously you need to run something in Azure, you need to authenticate against it. So you're going to say something along the lines of AZD auth login. And then after you run this command, you're going to simply say AZD, create me an environment, new environment, and I'm going to give it the name of this particular session, namely 542. If I, after I hit enter, it's going to take a while for all the packages to be uploaded and so forth. But imagine you want to create, for instance, a pipeline in GitHub Actions or in Azure DevOps. All you need to do is along the lines of AZD, pipeline, and you configure effectively get even the bicep. Uh, configuration and presentation of your Azure services and resources, but you also get your GitHub Actions and your manifest for Azure DevOps. Cool. Uh, this was a very quick intro, very fast going through how do you run Dapper and Aspire in Azure. If you have any questions, I'm going to be around and I'm going to be more than happy to answer your questions.